Hello and welcome to Americans Learn. My name is Lauren and today I'm going to be looking at a video from the creator Lindy Beige. Uh, this is going to be about spears are better than swords. Scientific proof. Now, if you've watched me on this channel before, you know that I like my swords. I do like them. I have tried using a spear a few times. I'm not very good at it. Uh, it just... I feel like maybe my arms aren't long enough for me to like really get an effective strike. Um, I, I believe him already when he says they're better. I mean, they're longer, you get greater distance. Like you can hit, you can do very similar moves with a spear as you can with a sword. Um, a lot of them are the exact same move just with your hands more spaced out. Um, and from further away. And again, if you can be further away from the person trying to kill you, that's better. <laughs> like, just, I mean, all right, we don't even have to watch the video. <laughs> but, like, we're going to. Um, but, I'm, you know, I'm looking forward to it. I like all of these, like, medieval weapon videos. I find them all very fun and entertaining. And I hope you do, too. Um, and one day, one day, if y'all are interested... I will potentially take you to one of my swords classes, which I think could be a lot of fun. So, for now, though, we are going to see why spears are better than swords. Matt Easton very kindly invited me to Fight Gap. Thank you for inviting me, Matt. You're very welcome. Yes, and whilst I was there, we thought it would be a jolly good wheeze to mount an experiment with spears. Now, you see, the spear is a bizarrely neglected weapon in the worlds of historical European martial arts, or HEMA. Um, HEMA. It was the most common weapon in the past, the whole of the past, mm. from Stone Age hunter-gatherers right the way up to the 20th century. Every I honestly didn't know that. Uh, but I will say, like, we do have some spear fighting in in my guild um that i'm in i'm just i have uh decided i don't need to <laughs> be at that level yet <laughs> like you have to you have to get to be like a scholar or something and i'm like a level i'm like in a i'm in a companion level so i'm middle of the road right now and um i don't want to have to take a written test in order to become a scholar so I probably won't be using the spear very much. Everyone used the spear, so it must have been pretty good. Far and away, the most common soldier in the ancient and medieval worlds was a guy with a spear in one hand and a big shield in the other. So this combination must have been really good to have proven so popular with so many people for so flipping long, and yet it's neglected. Now, um... He, I'm sorry, he talks like Lawrence from Lost in the Pond, and not just his accent, I mean his mouth shapes. <laughs> it's very distracting. Hema people, they know that... And he does the same things with his eyebrows, too. I'm like, his whole... <laughs> anyway, that's just something I noticed. Oh, yes, they know their swords. They've all tried back sword and, and, and small sword and long sword and great sword and messer and, you know, all those. But most of them have never used a spear before. So... Um, it's worth... It's hard! <laughs> experiment. Are spears better than swords? How can they possibly be? Because everyone knows a sword's great, right? But no, spears are really good, as these experiments, I think, clearly show. Although they also show that the spear has certain vulnerabilities. Now, importantly, the people you're about to see are not experts in spears. They Namely, they're a little bit harder to maneuver. That's like a major vulnerability with the spear. If you're like, if you are in close contact, and like closer range, if the people with the swords get up on you, it can be a little bit more difficult to maneuver. They've all used loads of swords loads of times. Yes. But most of these people have never picked up a spear in their life. Ugh. And those that had, had used it very seldom and not in combination with shield. So. Oh no, never with a shield. With experiment. Oh, but, but before we do, um, if you find this very interesting and you want to know more, I've uploaded a longer version of this video, which has all of all 65 bouts in it, as well as quite a bit of Ooh. pre and post match analysis from Matt and me. Well, that's fine. We can look at that at some point, maybe. ...version of this video, which has all of all 65... Bounds. All of that was annoying. I'm sorry, guys. ...pre- and post-match analysis from Matt Eason and me. Right, let's get on with it. Eight-foot spear without shield against one-handed sword. Go! Here you see the essential problem for the swordsman. He cannot reach his opponent. Yes. He can weave about and parry with his sword to keep himself safe, but the only way he can win the fight is to close with his foe. Once up close, he should beat the spearman. But look how fast the head of the spear is. That's a much 
I feel like that's a smaller spear than the one that I've used. Mine, the one I used was twice my size, it was huge. <laughs> a sudden charge can work. Once yes. you close, the spearman is doomed. It also looks a lot lighter. Most charges fail. <laughs> yep. Closing with Got a you. Spearman, it turns out, is really difficult. Yeah. Really Sounds about right. Difficult. Yeah. Really? <laughs> he got you. Difficult. Good solid chest hit. But it's not impossible. Got the, he, he tried it he tried it with a rondel. Like a little rondel dagger. What the hell, dude? Ah. Oh. <laughs> got him. The shorter weapon, once up close, has lots of Yes. Options. The spear's length becomes a drawback. Why is it always the groin? <laughs> <laughs> In these bouts between a spear and a variety of one-handed weapons, the results were spears nine, others three. Huh, okay, wow. Right, but surely it would be easier for the swordsman to close with the spearman if he had a shield. So let's start him off with a buckler. Right, well, we might expect a bit more success from the swordsman. Possibly they didn't open with their most skilled... Yeah, I'm saying, like, the spear that I have used is a was bigger than this. It was a lot longer. As I'm looking at this thing, it looks like this is about the size of him. The spear I used easily eight feet long. Like it's a huge, it's massive. And it was much, much heavier than the sword. And like the, the hilt of it and everything was even harder to hold. Like it was big. Um, it is so this is it is interesting to watch this but it is a little bit smaller than the one I was using which makes sense especially if they're going to give this spearman a shield later I was like there's no way I would be able to do anything with the like with a spear <laughs> but maybe that's just cuz I'm weak user of the buckler though watch how his buckler swings off to the left as he attacks and he's dead <laughs> a more effective technique is to hold your shield in front of you, <laughs> it gets in, and then the end is pretty quick. Alas, though, this technique is not a guarantee of victory. I've also never tried using the shield. Sometimes the swordsman got in, but more often not. <laughs> this doesn't count, though. If they hit each other, that's a double, and no. <laughs> yeah. There he is. That's it. This is a good fight. Good defensive work there. From him. Faints high, goes low, got him. Oh. And the buckler helped a bit. Sword and buckler men won two bout. That's also another, that's also another uh, level above where I'm at currently. I have, they're, they're not giving me a short sword and a buckler. I've got a long sword and it's a two-handed weapon. You can kind of use it with one hand, just not quite as effectively. To the spearman's four. Well, it seems that we might need a bigger sword. So let's try some long sword. Yay, long sword. <laughs> I love his little run. Now, everyone here had been to loads of long sword lessons. Yes. This man adopts the textbook ox stance and closes and finishes with what they call zvirchow. Oh, I fucking hate the vert. I hate that thing so much. Okay, we usually do. I do more Italian style fencing rather than that, which is more German. Like that. Like that. Like so, we have more of a finestra stance. But like, we have to do this vert gal thing, and oh my, in like a in in like the like little exercise portion of the class. That's not about fighting. It's about just cardio with weights, essentially. It sucks so bad. It's so hard, but we have to do a lot of it. It's like it's like this back and forth move where you like twist a lot, and like oh my god, it's so bad on your shoulders. <laughs> I hate it so much. This wasn't the universal result of longsword versus spear, however. This chap did get in once again, but in the main, it was a tale of dying swordsmen. <laughs> Bouts of long swords against spears. It was spears four, long swords two. Okay. All right then. What if the sword is a lot bigger? Let's try a socking great big two-handed spy hander. Ugh, These I've never seen that. Great sword patterns and tried some out. They are big and scary, but they are predictable. Okay. Good and to this know. Is pattern for what followed. Massive. Just <laughs> losing out to the much more nimble and precise. Yep. Oh! Oh! Ow! 
great swords. <laughs> Neil. <laughs> was a surprise to me. A minor Rip great sword. Expecting <laughs> some success with the great sword against the spear. Um, I would say that one of the reasons that the great sword has failed was that the longer a weapon is, if it's made out of nylon, then the floppier it is. Uh, and so a real great sword, which would have been made out of much stiffer metal, would have fared a bit better against the stiff wood spears that we were using. But I think that's a minor point. I think more importantly, it was the technique that the great sworders had chosen. They they used these big swings, which might work against a long ponderous pike for instance which is a much slower weapon than a quick nimble spear uh, also great sworders tend to be taught how to fight using a great sword against somebody else who's also rather bizarrely armed with a great sword in hema most okay. people are taught a weapon yes. against itself even if yes, in real that's battles, true. that would almost never happen and if someone in a battle is using a great sword you don't send a great sworder to take him on you you take him on with something else it would be a rather bizarre combination but anyway hmm. had that is interesting that is true we do fight our own weapons most of the time. I don't think I've ever seen anyone try to do like a spear versus sword. We've seen spear versus spear. We've seen swords versus swords. Like, okay, that's interesting. The closest we get to doing anything that's not, at least in my, my, where I do it, we tend to, if we're fighting with the long sword and then we get really close, someone might grab the long sword and stab with the dagger. Like, a quick little one two. The great sword is instead used those second quillons a little way up the blade and put their hand up like uh, next to that and then the other hand right down by the pommel. They would have turned their great swords into shortish spears. Oh, cool. And then I would think they would have done a lot better. Now we didn't run that particular experiment, but we did use some half swording with a different weapon. A change in technique now, sports fans, as we pit spear against long sword used half sworded. This technique stiffens the slightly floppy nylon blades and seems to encourage the swordsman to get stuck in. Love me. First blood <laughs> to the swordsman. <laughs> the general pattern of <laughs> the fight was a quick victory for a fast stabbing spearman or a longer and much messier tussle with the half sworder coming out on top. Okay. <laughs> Spears three, half sworded long swords, three. Also, just so y'all know, like yes, those those nylon guys are pretty floppy. They still hurt when they hit you. <laughs> like they're they're not super light. They're about as as heavy as a uh, a metal a metal one, um, and they they will still do some damage if they get you. <laughs> like like in class, we usually use steel you know we 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 fight with steel and then once you get and then we have like these various sparring nights and most people use the nylon swords for that um because you can't like we don't let you spar with steel until you are at the level of companion um and even then you have to have a lot of extra equipment that they don't always have for you so you might still use the nylon and then um nylon? whatever you, you'll still use the more of a practice sword. So we use that more in the sparring concept. Um, in, again, until you get to be a companion and then you can fight with steel. Um, but the nylon does hurt. I'm telling like <laughs> steel hurts too. The steel definitely hurts a little bit more. <laughs> you can get bruised real bad with the nylon sword. So far, it seems that the spears are carrying the day, but surely it will be much easier for the swordsman to close with the spearman if he has a big shield to help him. Science! Now, with a large shield, closing with a lone spearman becomes easy. However, most of our a big old shield. have not used a shield like this before and were still unhelpfully wary. But as long as the man with the shield holds it flat on in front of him, he's fairly safe. But the longer he hangs back, the more chances mm. the spearman has to score a hit. That makes sense. He tries holding it sideways on, which doesn't work as well. <laughs> Not at all. Shield in front of you. <laughs> That's where it's went wrong. Was people? <laughs> I like how disappointed he sounds. Like just, just hold it in front. And I do. It is kind of interesting though, because like in movies, it's usually a big shield, right? But apparently in real life, a lot of the times it was those much smaller bucklers that you we saw earlier. It's a smaller thing. It allows you for a little bit more maneuverability, and like you can knock the thing away and get in close. Knocking their heads and blinding themselves as they advanced. Don't do this. 
<laughs> keep your eye on target. It's like playing softball or baseball too. It's like keep your eye on the ball. If, if keep your eye on the ball. In this case, the ball is your opponent's head. You want to keep looking at where you're going. Because if you're not looking at where you're going, they can just they just pop around. Oh my god, I've taken advantage of that. <laughs> Someone gets distracted, looks somewhere else, boom, got you. <laughs> But I mean, I've never shield forward and charge in. I've never tried to fight with a shield like that or any kind of shield. So don't listen to me. Dead. Dead. Coming. Nice. That was like some good smacks. Whoa! Keep your shield in front of you. Oh, come on, get in. Get in there, man. This is painful to watch. Stylish finish, though. Here we have how to use a spear versus how not to use a shield. Pink Legs is keeping his foe back with lots of quick thrusts, high and low. He goes low and scores a hit to the knee there. The shieldsman drops his shield. No! Oh no! Opening him up to a good thrust to the throat. Ugh! In the close-up, that would have been fatal to an unarmored man. Ow! Enraged, Red True swings wildly with his sword arm and at the same time swings his shield <laughs> out to the left, opening him up to another deft thrust to the throat. He's dead! Time ends the matter. One chap tried using a cross-grip medium shield. These don't work so well. Ooh, straight to the throat. Ugh. Painful. It is. It's not fun. Tripping over the opponent's spear and crashing <laughs> <laughs> well, it wasn't exactly elegant, but it did the job. <laughs> you know what? If it works, it works. It didn't die. <laughs> it's all good. Scores on the doors. Spears, seven. Swords, six. Oh. Definitely improving for the swordsman now. Okay. Now to pit. Sword, it's a big old... Shield. As long as you use it right. And shield. Uh-oh. This makes a huge difference, because now the spearman has to use his spear one-handed. Which sucks. It's so heavy and like in a weird, it's a weird balance. Ugh. Which is much slower and weaker than when you yes. use two hands. And I don't think anyone here had ever tried it before. I expect victories for the swordsman. I expect that too. Some spearmen tried holding their spears overarm like this and quickly learned that it doesn't work. <laughs> nope. <laughs> no one tried using overarm technique twice. It's hopeless. Fair. <laughs> nice, he had his little axe. And buckler. You swap all the vigor of two-handed spear for the protection of a teacup. The left-handed spearman was at a lesser disadvantage, but still died. <laughs> lesser disadvantage, still dead. Shield is very vulnerable to sword and shield. Oh, and that violence, as here, can sometimes triumph. <laughs> violence can triumph! <laughs> Sometimes, yeah. Overwhelm them with nonsense. Situation has reversed. Swords six, spears nil. Sick. On to the group round. The spear, of course, is a battlefield weapon used by large formations of many men. For the first four bouts, therefore, the swordsmen were required to attack from the front at first. It was messy, and the spearmen were all new to helping each other out. Okay. Parry blows aimed at his neighbors as well as those aimed at himself. And the easiest Good. targets to hit are not the man opposite, but the men either side of him. Mm, that tracks. That makes sense. Nevertheless, all four bouts were won by the spearmen. Yes. Even if they themselves didn't quite know how they pulled off a <laughs> experienced swordsman. I mean, I guess that's why you give them to the peasants, right? It's like love large numbers or whatever and like it's statistics keep them away from you i think my shouted encouragement possibly helped quick spearman Qu quick <laughs> he got real high on that one come on spearman help your, help your mate oh come on. yeah that's swordsman you're dead you're dead <laughs> He, the, the sheer mania and adrenaline kept him fighting for a little bit longer than he was actually alive for. Next, the swordsmen were told that they were free to launch their attack from any angle they pleased. Again, things got messy, but the odds swung in favor of the swordsmen, who won some costly victories. Oh! Right there. Stay still. Get that one. Yeah, <laughs> Go to it. I dance, baby, dance. Charged. When they heeded me a bit, this led to a flawless victory. Very nice. 
Now, sit back and marvel at the pinnacle of spearmanship that came out of all we had learned so far. <laughs> Lost it. Are you going to putting Benny Hill over that one? <laughs> Whatever that goes. Bouts, when attacking from the front, spears four, swords nil. When attacking from any direction, spears one, swords three. What have we learned? Well, I haven't learned all that much because all these experiments confirmed what I had discovered many years ago back in my university days when I was doing loads of reenactment, uh, fighting in Dark Age style battles with almost all the time spear and shield. Those were our primary weapons. Okay, we that's interesting. Combinations. And so we found out that the spear will beat a sword, that a sword and shield will usually beat a spear, but the spear has okay. a reasonable chance if he's good, uh, that sword and shield will beat spear and shield pretty much every single time, but that in group fights it's a different story. In group fights the spearmen are able to help out their neighbours very, very well in ways that swordsmen... That's awesome. Aren't. And spearmen will beat swordsmen pretty much every time unless the swordsmen are able to surround, penetrate, break up the formation of the spearmen so the spearmen can't act as a cohesive team, in which case it becomes a free-for-all which could go either way. But do remember that spearmen in historical reality didn't just have spears, they had other weapons dangling from their belts. They had daggers, hatchets, maces, swords or... Everybody had a dagger, baby. <laughs> some backup weapon so that you know when the, uh, the spears did get broken up they could then just ditch their spears perhaps throwing them first and then draw some shorter weapon and then you've evened up they've evened up the odds again my friend did that <laughs> not with a spear but like sometimes throwing your weapon is like your last ditch and it's like <laughs> he threw the wet he threw the sword launched himself and then stabbed the opponent with the dagger <laughs> it was very funny another time he tried something similar with me but like we were both fighting with daggers at the time and he like threw his dagger at me for some reason which i then caught <laughs> then i was like i have two daggers and i stabbed him twice <laughs> It was a very good move by me. Sometimes the goal is to just surprise your guy. And I guess if the spear breaks, then chucking it, or even the sword, if it breaks, which it can do, because that is a move that people will try to do. If your sword gets, like, buried in the ground, um, they can you can stomp on it, and it can, in fact, just snap. Um, because, again, they're pretty bendy, but, like, they can still just break. And then now you have a broken sword chuck that thing at somebody and attack him with your dagger next like you know anyway so there you go in summary spears are good and keep your shield in front of you <laughs> amazing that's fun all right that was fun i really enjoyed that they are the best. Honestly, the times that I've done um, various sparring things, <laughs> there's been times where it's like, it's just like you get you get too close and now suddenly you're, you can't do anything. So now you're just basically in a grapple. <laughs> it's like, can you, can you get out of that? I don't know. So I'm, we learn how to do that too. But like, <laughs> it ends up looking very silly from afar when you get a little bit too close and suddenly like each of you has like the other person's sword in your hand and you're just like kicking at each other. That's always funny. They break that up pretty quickly, usually, but still. <laughs> anyway, I enjoyed that a lot. I really hope you did, too. Um, if you want to see more stuff like this, go ahead and let me know by giving the video a like, um, telling me what else from Lindy Beige I should look out for. Um, I might pop in to just watch the <laughs> which is greater, longer version, just for fun, for me. Um, so, yeah, let me, let me know uh, what you thought, and I will see you all in the next video. Bye-bye.